عن أبي حمزة أنس بن مالك رضي الله عنه قادم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله بعد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت باركت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم إنك أحمد مجيد إخوان في الله وأخوات الكرام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he says in this hadith لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه None of you and he's talking to me and you Muslims None of you truly believes until or unless you love for your fellow Muslim what you love for yourself These are short it's a short concise statement lakin wallahi if we were to explain it and give it its right the way it deserves to be explained we need two and a half weeks exactly we need 20 days that's almost three weeks actually like has been mentioned by the brothers who came here before me <clears throat> this book the compilation of Mamnawi, he said himself, I compiled 42 a hadith. There are 42 actually, not 40. Which comprise the foundations of this beautiful religion. The foundations, things which we have to have. There's a lot of hadith of the Prophet wasallam, more than 12,000. He compiled 40 ahadith which are the foundations, basics, which every Muslim needs. And this hadith, it touches on one of the main concepts which Islam came to propagate. None of you truly believes until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. And of course for the women, none of you truly believes until you love for your sister what you love for yourself. Basically to summarize we're saying loving good for others. This is the concept which Islam has been renowned for. And here, alhamdulillah, we have a very good practical example. Look around you. Like I said before in the morning, different colors, shapes, sizes, forms. What brings us together is the love we have for each other. The organizers who organized this conference, Allah knows best what is in their hearts, but from what I know, it's because they love the good to be spread and shared to all of us. Those speakers whom you see here, most of them or some of them are not, do not belong to Toronto. They left their families and their work and they traveled long distances because they love good for us. The Prophet ﷺ, he says, Oh, before that, let me give you a story. I know you guys like stories. You want a story? Yes. And this is really, really touching, especially for the women. Aisha radhu anha, Aisha radhiyallahu anha, she says, Ja'at miskinatun ilayya, wa'indaha bintayn. A poor woman came to my house to beg, and she had with her two daughters of hers, very young girls. فَنَظَرْتُ فِي الْبَيْتِ So I looked into the house because when the poor one comes and the needy one comes Islam says to you again you love good for for others you have to help she says may Allah be pleased with her I looked into the house and all I found 
this is the house of the Prophet The greatest man ever to live on earth. I only found three deaths. Not three boxes of deaths, no, three deaths. Three deaths. What should she do? What would you do? What do you do, sister? You say, oh, my husband will come home in the evening, he's hungry. He went to work. Maybe I should save it for him, that's his dinner. That used to be their food, dates and water. Like in Aisha, she says, no. In her heart, she is one of the best students of Islam, learning the deen from the Prophet ﷺ directly. She knows the concept of loving for others, you love for yourself. She took one of the dates and gave it to the mom. Took the other one, gave it to one of the daughters. Took the other one, gave it to the second daughter. The two girls, because they are very hungry, in a very quick, short time, they finished that date they were given. Aisha, anha, she says, and she's narrating this to the Prophet ﷺ. When the mom was about to eat her date, the children started crying, raising their hand to the mom, because they're still hungry. So the mother being a mother, and being a good Muslim who loves for others, she loves for herself, she took that date and split it into two and gave half to one of the daughters and half to the other one. Aisha says, this action of hers amazed me. So I waited for the Prophet وسلم, and, he gave him, and she gave him this story. And the Prophet وسلم, says, Allah has obligated Jannah for her. Just because of that action. Loving good for yourself is good. You are a human being. Like in Islam says no. Don't drown. Don't drown into what? Self-love. Don't be selfish. You have to love for others, you love for yourself. You'll never be a true believer. Your belief will always be deficient. Unless you have that. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, listen to all these ahadith. All these ahadith just emphasize this point. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, La tahasadu. Do not envy each other. Do not envy each other. Wa la tanajashu. And do not practice naj. Naj is when people are in an auction. You know an auction? And we sell, somebody is selling something, but he has planted someone in the crowd just to raise the prices. He doesn't want to buy. He sees Muhammad raising the hand for 200, he raises the hand for 250. Not because he wants to buy, just because he wants to raise the prices. When you do that, you're harming your brother. The Prophet says, La tanajashu, do not practice naj. Wala tabahadu, do not hate each other. It's not part of our religion. وَلَا تَدَابَرُوا Do not run away from each other. We have some people, their hearts are sick. He sees his brother coming from that door. He lives with that door. Oh, he's coming. Actually, it's the sisters, they practice this more. And I'm sorry, I have to say this. It is rampant in the, on the women's side. وَلَا تَدَابَرُوا Do not run away from each other. وَلَا يَبِيعُ بَعْضُكُمْ وَلَا بَيْعَ أَخِي and no one should purchase what his brother has already purchased. If I made a contract, a deal, I'm selling my, to my sheikh here my phone for $400. You are not supposed to come and say, no, I'll give you 500 Once I have made that agreement with him, do not harm your brother. Al-Muslim akho Muslim. Why? Why all of this? Because the Muslim is a brother to another Muslim. لا يظلمه. He cannot oppress him. A Muslim can never oppress another Muslim. ولا يخذله. He cannot humiliate him and let him down when he needs his help. ولا يحقره. He cannot disgrace him. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, بحسب مريء من الشر أن يحقر أخاه مسلم. It is enough sin. يعني if you didn't do any sin except this sin. This sin is enough to destroy you. It is enough of a sin that you look down on your fellow Muslim brother or sister. 
feeling that you're better than him, having that pride, arrogance, ego. Because once you have that, you can never love him. You can never want good for him. How can you want good for him when you look down on him? This concept is so deep in Islam. Let me give you other examples. Loving good for others. Oh, before I continue, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, says, مَثَلُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فِي تَوَادِّهِمْ The parable or the example of the Muslims, the believers, in how they love each other. وَتَعَاتُفِهِمْ And how they have compassion to each other. وَتَرَاحُمِهِمْ And how they have mercy to each other. كَمَثَلِ الْجَسَدْ the example of how Muslims love each other and have compassion to each other and are merciful to each other is like the example of one body. If one body part X has pain, you feel it in your whole body, don't you? You don't just say, oh, it's only my head. I can take off my head and my body won't feel good. No. Oh, it feel good. No. That's why the other hadith, the Prophet sallallahu says, Al-Muslim or Al-Mu'min akhul mu'min. The Muslim is a brother to his Muslim. Yashuddu ba'duha ba'd. He helps him and she helps her. And when the Prophet sallallahu said this hadith, he put his fingers together like that. Like a brick wall. Have you ever seen a brick wall? All of us have seen a brick wall. How do people build a wall? They don't lay the bricks in a line like that. Then the other one is on top. No. They have to do what? They have to interlace. They have to lock. The other brick on the top has to go a bit inside this. And the other one has to be inside that. That is how Muslims are. Loving good for others that you love for yourself. Let me give you another story. No guys who like stories. And it's like 5 o'clock, most of you need coffee or something. Maybe a story will wake you up. Like in us always, we say, we give the stories which are beneficial, not just stories for the sake of stories. And authentic, it has to be authentic. Abdullah ibn Amr, he says, one day we are sitting with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now I'm mentioning to you, doing good to others. Loving good for others. You cannot attain that if you have, as we mentioned, envy. You are jealous. You hate other Muslims. You run away from them. You disgrace them. You humiliate them. You look down on them. All of these are diseases of the heart which you have to cure first before you can love anyone. He says, we are, we are sitting with the Prophet and he said to us, just picture this. They're sitting in the masjid, the Prophet with his companions, and he says to them, in a short moment, a person from the people of paradise will enter. Abdullah says then one of the Sahaba he entered and his beard was wet after making wudu. This is something amazing, ya Ikhwan. Someone who is still walking on the earth and he has guarantee of paradise. It is not simple. He said, we sat. Next day, same thing happened. They were sitting with the Prophet وسلم, and the Prophet says the same thing. A person from the people of Jannah will enter right now. And the same Sahaba companion came in. Third day, same thing. So Abdullah, he said, I decided to myself with some of my friends, we have to find the secret. He has been successful. We have to find the secret. He says, so I followed him on the third day. And I said to him, Ya Akhi, oh my brother, there was something which happened at home and I have nowhere to stay. Would you take me as your guest? Look how people love to know what is good. He is going all the way to find out what is the secret why he is going to Jannah. And he says, sure, why not? Says, I went with him. We had dinner. And then I pretended like I slept to see how much salah, tahajjud he prays. But he didn't wake up and pray for hours. 
Just before Fajr, he woke up and prayed two or three rakah, four rakahs, and that's it. He says, so I was amazed. Because the night prayer is one of the main reasons we go to Jannah. So I waited during the daytime. Maybe he's someone who fasts a lot. But he was not fasting, he was eating. First day, second day. On the third day, he said, I could not take it anymore. And I said to him, Ya Akhi, the reason I'm here, when you entered the masjid on that day, the Prophet ﷺ said, a man from the people of paradise is entering. We want to know what is the reason why you are going to Jannah. What is special about you? Now listen. If you want Jannah, listen. And inshallah, all of us want Jannah, right or wrong. Yes or no? I didn't hear you. He says to him, Ya I don't have great, great actions. Like you saw my life. I only pray for a few minutes or a few, uh, one hour or less at night. And I don't fast every day. He says, so what is the thing which you do? He says to him, I make sure. Every night before I sleep, in my heart, I don't have any grudges, any hatred for anyone. I make it a point. Every night before I sleep, I check on myself. I have no grudges. No hatred against no one. And I make it a point whenever I see a Muslim with ni'mas, with favors, with blessings, he is rich or he has this, he has that, I never envy him. In fact, I say, oh Allah, bless him more. You know what Abdullah said? He says, This is the thing which we don't, cannot do. It is not easy. Lacking it is easy for the one whom Allah makes it easy for. Having a clean heart. Loving good for others. This is Islam. A man comes to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and says to him, Ya Rasulullah, ayyun nas ahabbu ila Allah? Wa ayyun nas afdal? Who is the best person in front of Allah? He says, afdalun nas, the best person. If you want to be the best in Islam, listen to this hadith. أفضل الناس أنفعهم للناس The best person is the one who is the most beneficial to others. He is always helping. He is always volunteering. He's always, he always has the helping hand. He is always ready to be there. That is the best person. Whether it is by knowledge, by his money, by his efforts, by his time, you are ready for your Muslim brother or sister. The Prophet وسلم, then he said, look at this. لأن أمشي لأقضي حاجة أخي that I stand up he is talking صلى الله عليه وسلم the greatest human being he says that I stand up and go with my brother to take care of his need whatever he has to do I go and help him أحب إلي من أن أعتكف في مسجد هذا شهرا it is more beloved to me than to stay for اعتكاف seclusion in my masjid the Masjid of the Prophet ﷺ in Medina for one month. If I had the option, staying in Itika for one month, look at the great reward you have. And going and helping my brother for something he needs. This is more beloved to me. This is Islam. This is Islam. You have to have an open heart. You have to be ready to help others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, إخوان, Piety or righteousness is not just you turning your face to the east and the west, just praying. That is not just Islam. Islam is not just facing east or west. Rather, al-bir is the one who fears Allah and is the proper aqeedah, tawheed. And he helps the miskeen, the poor ones. The will qurba, those who are close to you. The yatam, aytam, the orphans. And he gives his wealth with an open heart. Loving good for others. Look how the Prophet wasallam he emphasizes this point practically. Even in salah, which is the greatest ibadah we have to do every day. The Prophet ﷺ, he says, sometimes I stand 
and I plan to make the salah long. But when I hear a baby crying, I make my salah very short because I know that disturbs the mother. The mother who's praying, she's disturbed that the baby is crying. How is she going to, to pray properly? So he makes the salah of everybody short because of one baby. This is Islam. This is Islam. The Prophet وسلم, he says, إِذَا صَلَّ أَحَدُكُمْ بِالنَّاسِ When one of you is an imam, he's praying, and the people behind him, فَلْيُخَفِّفْ Make it light. فَإِنَّ مِنْهُمْ الْمَرِيدِ وَذُوِ الْحَاجَةِ Because those who are praying behind you, there's someone who's sick, someone who has to go somewhere, someone is old. Make it light. Love for others to love for yourself. Be merciful. When you pray by yourself, he says, make it as long as you want. Look how the Prophet Sallallahu emphasizes this point again. He says, Wallahi la yu'min. Wallahi la yu'min. Wallahi la yu'min. Wallahi is not a believer. Wallahi is not a believer. Wallahi is not a believer. They say, Dear Rasulullah, who is this? He's been destroyed. He says, Man la ya'man jaruhu bawa'iqahu. The one whom his neighbor does not feel secure from him. His neighbor always fears that he is going to harm him. He's not a true believer. People have to feel comfortable with you. You have to be like Isa alayhi salam. Jesus when he said to his Lord. He made me mubarakan aynama kunt. A blessing. Wherever I am, I'm a blessing. You have to be considerate to others. You have to be compassionate to others. You have to be merciful to others. You have to love for others that you love for yourself. This is Islam. And this is the Islam which flourished and entered into Europe and Asia Minor and Asia Deep, into Africa, Pakistan, India. This is the Islam which came to you and me. And people, they just accepted it. If this is your deen, who does not want this deen? That is how Islam came to East Africa, where me and you are from. That is how Islam went to Pakistan and Sri Lanka and Indonesia. The Muslim traders went there, they were good Muslims. And the indigenous people there, they saw these guys don't cheat. They don't steal. When they weigh the goods they're selling, they give proper measure. What is wrong with you guys? They used to be cheated, you know. They used to people stealing from them. What is wrong with you guys? They said, no, no. Inna Muslimun, we are Muslims. And we live with a mandate. We have an, we have an order, we have discipline, we have a law which we follow. And part of that law says to us, you have to do good to others, even if they're not Muslims. Didn't Allah say about his Prophet, We only sent you some mercy to every single thing. That's why he used to cry. The Prophet used to cry. And used to be very sad if he was to give da'wah to someone who's not a Muslim and that person refuses Islam. He used to be in great stress. Why? Because he loves good for him. When someone still has not accepted Islam, you have to feel bad for them. You have to feel that mercy for them. They are still in darkness. Loving good for others. This is our deen, ya ikhwan, and very sadly, very sadly, it is one of the most important things which we are lacking today. And when I say we, it means me and you, or at least most of us. It is lacking today. Our brotherhood is superficial, fake. I'm sorry to say it. Fake smiles. Don't you love that when you meet your brother, he smiles at you? Brother, not sister. Right? Why don't you smile? Love for others, you love for yourself. We have to be practical Muslims. The Prophet wasallam, the first thing he did when the Muslims of Mecca, the Muhajirun went to Medina. What is the first thing he did? He did the Mu'akha, the brotherhood. You will be his brother, and you will be his brother. Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqasi says, one of the Ansar who was made my brother, 
He said to me, Ya Sa'ad, tell me, I have two wives. Go and look which one of them is most pleasing to you. I'll divorce her, then you will marry her. And I have two great plantations of farms. Tell me what you need, I'll give it to you. You can do that thing? Me and you, can we do that? Let's be honest. He says to him, Barakallahu fi malik wa ahlik. May Allah bless you in your wealth and your family. Just show me where is the marketplace. I'll go and work for myself. This is Islam. This is Islam. Hudayfa, he says, in the battle of Yarmouk, in the battle of Yarmouk, it's not Hudayfa the Sahabi, it's another Hudayfa. After the battle, I took some water and I was looking for my uncle. I said, maybe he needs water because I don't see him. Probably he's injured. Maybe he's about to die. So I searched for my uncle from those who are injured until I found him. Until I found him. And I gave him the water to drink and I said to him, do you need the water? He says, of course, look at me. I'm almost dying, thirsty. He says when he's about to drink, he had someone else crying out, ah, with pain. So he says, take it to him. He goes to the second person. Same thing, he's injured, thirsty, almost out. He gives him to drink, he hears another one crying out with pain. He says, no, give it to my brother. He says, when I reach to that third person, when I'm about to give him to drink, he passed away. Inna lillahi wa inna lillahi raji'un. So I returned to my uncle. By the time I come back to him, he had passed away. So I went back to the second person. By the time I went to him, he had passed away. These were the Muslims. These were the Muslims. People who understood what it means to submit yourself to Allah. People who understood what it means to be a mercy to everything you see, especially the fellow human beings you live with. Give it to him. When you hear the hadith that Abu Bakr, when he's told give, and he takes everything he has of his wealth and he gives. See, one thing I'll, I'll, I have to say to this, my brothers and my sisters. Whenever you hear this hadith and the ayahs of the Quran, the verses of the Quran, you have to take time and think, contemplate to them. How great are these people? Then you'll understand why Allah gave them such a high degree and why Allah gave them majesty in this dunya and the hereafter. He gives all of his wealth. Because people need it. People need it. Ikhwanifillah. No one of you truly believes until you love for each other or you love for your brother or you love for yourself. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he emphasized this like we mentioned practically and in so many words. In so many words, what we need to do from now, each of us has to make a resolution in your own heart. Each of us has to make a firm decision. Each of us has to be sincere. Remember, ikhlas is the key. Once you're sincere to Allah, Allah makes, you, makes things easy for you. Those who need your help, help them. And watch how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens up the doors for you. Have a clean heart. Have a clean heart. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, I warn you of the disease of the people who passed by you. You know what is that disease? 
he says al hasad al baghda having envy jealousy to each other and hating each other splitting up into groups every time you have a small argument you go your way he goes his way it is not islam i'm sorry to say that to you the muslims they stay and they resolve their problems have a clean heart Remember Abdullah ibn Amr, he goes to that Sahaba. In fact, that Sahaba, that Sahaba, this is what is amazing. We don't even know his name. The one whom three days he enters is the Prophet, some says the person of Jannah is entering. No one knows his name. We don't even know his name. Lakin Allah is a role model for us. What is the secret? Why are you going to Jannah? He says, I make it a point. Every single day before I sleep, I look into my heart. And I have no grudges for anyone. I have no hatred for anyone. And whenever I see a Muslim who's doing better than me, I never envy. In fact, I say, may Allah bless you and give you more. Cleanness of the heart. Being ready to help others. Listen to this hadith which I'll finish with. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, Hadith Qudsi. Al-Mutahabbina fiya. Wal-Mutajalisina fiya. Wal-Mutabadhilina fiya. Ala manabir min lul. Ala yameen al-Rahman. Yaghbituhum al-Nabiyyoon wa al-Shuhada. Those who love each other for my sake, Allah says. Not because of they're both from Somalia or Kenya, Pakistan, India, Afghanistan, Switzerland, wherever you're from. No. They love each other because of Islam. And those who sit with each other like this and remind each other because of Islam. And those al mutabadhilina fiya, Those who give each other for each other's sake. They help each other. They love good for each other. He says, they will be on pulpits like this, risen chairs on the right side of Ar-Rahman, even the prophets and the martyrs, the shuhada, will be jealous of them. And of course, the prophets and the martyrs will have the same degree. Lakin, they'll be jealous in the good jealousy. Look how these people have got such a high degree on the Day of Judgment. Why? They are people with clean hearts, people who loved good for each other. Again, we have to take firm decisions. You know, proper resolutions in our hearts. You have to fight your own selfishness, like I said. You love good for others. Wallahi, I'm saying it again because it's not my words. Allah says, at the Prophet says, Ar-Rahimun, Yarhamuhum Ar-Rahman. Those who are merciful to others, Ar-Rahman will be merciful to them. It is one of the main reasons, one of the main keys to have a happy and successful life. May Allah give me and you and our families a happy and successful life. May Allah give us the best of this dunya and the hereafter. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatana fil akhirati hasanatana qina adhab al-nar. Rabbana akhfir lana wa li ikhwani al-lazina sabakuna bil-eeman. Wa la taj'al fi qulubina ghilna lil-lazina amunu rabbana inna karaufur rahim. Wa akhiru da'wahum lil-hamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Subhanaka Allahumma bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilahe la anta istaghfiru katubu ilayk. Jazakum Allah khairan for your good listening. Wassalamu alaikum.